Seven zero transition, five one split, four zero transition, and a one nine split. Okay, so we're not going to worry about hit factor here, right? The goal was to shoot Alvin's two upper left alphas at 15, right? Possibly a close Charlie on there. I'm pretty confident they're like right about here at 15. 25, there's one about here, and I think one about right here. It might be a Charlie at 25. Again, did I hold myself accountable for making sure I put the gun in the right spot when I aimed each shot? Yep, so I'm pretty happy with that. If there's a if there's a Charlie or whatever in there, I'm acceptable with that. What I didn't do is shoot like an asshole, right? And that's a very, very important thing to, to, to think about here. You gotta shoot in control. So right now, my in control cold performance on that resulted in a 3.58 second run. So let's look at a couple of numbers here. Real quick, I'm going to dismiss a couple of things. Seven yard split, 0.19. Right in my wheelhouse. I shot it as fast as I could visually process information resulted in two alphas. Do you think I'd be barking up the wrong tree right now if I started my focus on, I need to shoot faster at seven yards? Probably. That's right. So automatically, let's gonna put just a little check mark next to 1.19, right? That becomes a standard. I shot it as fast as I needed to in order to generate the hit that I wanted, right? I didn't leave much time on the table. There's not much meat on the bone. So trying to chase down a 0.16 split, what, ooh, what's that get me? 0.03 ultimately. So we go from a 3.58 to a 3.55. <laughs> Seems kind of like an utter waste of time to chase that one, right? Okay, so let's look at the split time at 25, the second number of 25, which is a 0.51. Remember yesterday, I told you guys what my average time was for me to be able to see what the sights are doing, lifting and returning for my, my typical split times to be able to call good shots at 25 was about what? 0.45 to 0.51. Am I in my wheelhouse there? Absolutely. So cold run performance, so far so good. I'm on it for seven and I'm on it for 25. We'll check mark that one. Not a whole lot of attention needs to be had there. I'm not gonna go barking up that tree, right? I don't need to rush it to go any faster yet, okay? Is there a little meat on that bone? Maybe a little bit. Depends on what I'm gonna try to push next, right? Split time at 15. 0.43, I'll tell you right now, there's probably a good tenth of a second there I'm leaving behind. Knowing historically, because of data I've collected before, on I know what my typical 15 yard split times are, and they're generally around that 0 0.3, 0 0.32 neighborhood. So 0.43, did I leave a tenth there? Sure, now I'm looking at, if I just improve or focus on the split at 15, I should be able to shoot a 3.48. Is that improvement? That's a, that's a fairly noticeable improvement for a six round array, right? Okay, so we're gonna kind of just draw like a little circle or something on there, right next to it. Yep, there we go. We're gonna circle that. That's gonna be a point of focus for the next run, okay? Starting to see a pattern here. So now I'm gonna look at the other three numbers. I had a 1.35 draw, ice cold to the 15 yard target. Pretty solid, I feel so. I can probably cut a tenth off of there. So I'm gonna circle that number. Because I know historically, my draw time to a 15 yard target is somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.15 to 1.2 on demand. I was a little sluggish waiting on the beep, right? So I got a little behind getting the gun out there. Now again, 135, I'm gonna to try to make it a 1.25 and not lose track of structure on the gun. 
and not lose track of visual awareness of where the sights are at, right? Still got to hold myself accountable. So I'm still looking at, these are things I can change without affecting, without affecting accuracy, right? Transition from the 15 to the 25 of 0.70. Because I've recorded data previously on this, I would look at that and go, mm, I probably could have pushed that transition probably two tenths of a second faster. Historically, when I go 15 to, uh, 15 to 25, I'm in the neighborhood of somewhere around 0.6 to 0.5. So I'm gonna circle that number. Circling that number, right, that tells me those, those are my attentions. That's, that's where my priorities are at. And then the transition from 25 to seven at 0.40, that target's right there, right there. I spent twice the amount of time that I really needed to to move the gun from 25 to 7. So I'm going to circle that 0 0.40 transition. That should be someplace around 0.3 or better. So let's just, circling those numbers, I'm going to look at a tenth, a tenth, a tenth, and a tenth. Is a tenth a lot of time? It sure adds up to a lot of time. I can theoretically go from a 3.58, if I say four tenths on it, 3.18. Now we're starting to get somewhere, right? Possibly. So I'm gonna prioritize that. He doesn't need to write these numbers down yet, but we're gonna be able to at least go back and look at them very, 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 very quickly on the timer. So I'm not gonna need to like, again, like objectify all the data and write it all down. That's a waste of time. But I can at least go back and look at it and now I can take some comparison notes. Did I hit my objectives or not? So the next two runs I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna do one to try to match what I'm trying to do. Right, or to gain that time. Then I'm gonna shoot another run right behind it to do what? Average. To validate that I can do it again, right? One time is luck. Two times starts to be a pattern. Three times starts to be consistency. Four times starts to become mastery. Boom. <laughs> right? So doing it once and hooking up, calling the shot, swinging for the fences and connecting gives us a false sense of confidence that, hey, this is a new skill that I've developed. But if you're stopping after one run, yep, made progress. I challenge that. It's the same thing as saying, well, I drew fast really, like really quickly one time, draw the first shot at seven yards in point eight. Therefore, I'm a point eight draw the first shot kind of shooter now. But you're not, you did it once. And we'll talk about kind of that breakdown of skill before something becomes like a pattern again or before something becomes mastery okay so my next run i'm going to focus on those four numbers right draw the first shot split at 15 transition to 25 and transition to seven right yes sir real quick um so absolutely uh, you could Right? Right now, I'm just gonna do another run to see if I can start putting those four pieces of the puzzle together, okay? So you could, technically, you could do a transition just from one to the other. So let's look at draw to 15. That's a great, that's a great idea. I'm gonna draw, I'll put this magazine back in it. I'm gonna draw and see if I can make that draw to first shot to an A at 15 in a tenth faster than 1.35. Okay, that's a great question. that one piece and isolating that one piece that I, that I find my goal. Sure. So I know pretty easily if I can just cut a tenth of a second off of it, I cut two tenths off, but if I can cut even just a tenth of it off, ooh, I'm one now, I, I'm, I'm one shot closer to achieving my goal, right? I could focus on just the isolation from 15 to 25, but instead I'm going to go ahead just for the sake of brevity, I'm going to shoot the entire drill again, left to right. 
But now this time it's to, to see if I can make those numbers change. And I'm focused on just those numbers alone, okay? Pick up an extra shot somewhere. Yeah, I picked up a. No, I picked it up. I don't know why I picked up a. That's whatever that .08 is. Yeah, that didn't happen. Okay, so first number, right? Draw to 15. So the draw to 15. What number were we trying to beat? 1.35. 1.35. 1.24. Boom! There's a 10. Right? Point three nine split at fifteen. Is that better than my point four three? A little bit. I'll say I was a little sluggish that time just on the transition. So I'm halfway there. Right? I, I saved four hundredths of a second instead of a full ten. That's okay. Okay. Then I've got a point five one transition to twenty-five. What was the number I was trying to beat? Point seven. Point seven. So I picked up two tenths there. So now I'm not even so worried about the split time that I fixed at, 20, at 15 needing to be a tenth faster because hell, I picked up a tenth and a half. Oh I actually picked up full two tenths just transitioning the gun from 15 to 25, right? So I'm definitely now, I'm three tenths of the four tenths I was trying to achieve. I'm already three tenths there, 75% of the way there in three shots. Mm -hmm. I'm liking this so far, right? Split time at 25. I actually saved a 10. I went from a 0.51 to a 0.41. Hey, I'll take that. Nothing looked any different. I was just able to make the decision to fire that second shot a little earlier. Why? Because I'm visually, I'm honed into once the sights are where I want them to be, I'm not wasting any more time. So a 0.41 on that. Transitionally, we were looking to improve the number of what from 25 to 7? 0.4. 0.40. 0.34 time transition from 25, so I saved a half a tenth there, right? Shot six being the 18 split, right in the same right same wheelhouse as the 0.19, right? I didn't try to make it up by like loosely shooting faster at seven. That wasn't where my my hunt for time was, right? But did I achieve my goal? Total time on it, 3.15 seconds from 3.58. Did I find my four tenths? Yes, right? So I did it once, now can I do it again? Okay, so now I'm not gonna look at all of the data this time. All I'm gonna try to do is match the data from this, this second run from my third run. So now I'm just gonna look at overall time. Can I match my overall time pretty damn closely, right? I'd say within a half a tenth to a tenth. So 3.15, 3.05, 3.25, right? It gets me in my wheelhouse. Yes, sir. How much does warming up, uh, you know, when I, when I first got my first shot, I'm a lot slower than I am in the hour. And how much of uh, the improvements that you're going to see as you're doing these things? So that's a great question, and I'm not sure we agree on it. Go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead first. So here, here's my deal, right? Um, when you look at match performance, right? Take, take a match. In my opinion, at a at a match, you are never actually warmed up. You're just not, right? Uh, because you never shoot enough rounds out of the gun to be truly warmed up. What ends up happening is we do end up warming up when we start going to the range and we get maybe a hundred rounds in succession into our into our uh, our practice session, right? Then we start warming up and then we start seeing what? You, you, you get this perceived idea that, oh, look, I have made a ton of progress now. Uh, that is not, to me, that's not actually realistic practice. 
because what you're doing is you're doing the same thing over and over again, right? Uh, to a point where you've shot it so many times that yep, everything is natural, this is good. If you notice, pretty much when Tim and I practice, we don't run any particular drill more than maybe four or five times. If we shoot a stage, we never seem to shoot a stage more than three times. One for a cold run, one to push something, then we isolate everything, and then one for a final, uh, you know, final performance uh, assessment. Can we put it all together? Right. That right. allows us to still maintain, like, listen, we're never truly like, warmed up. Uh, our last practice session together was three and a half hours and I think we might have almost shot a hundred rounds, right? So we're never really getting to that point where I'm like, oh my God, I'm so warm. Look at how much better I am. Because for us, for most of us, we're never actually going to be in that state in any other place but practice sessions where we just keep hammering and hammering and hammering and hammering. So that's my thought. Uh, no, I, I agree. Um, the other thing too is obviously in order to find improvement, there's got to be some repetition, right? Mm -hmm. I can't, I mean, everything is all about like, well, what's my cold run performance on that? Right. Well, I had one run on it, so I guess I can't really count anything beyond that because that was a warm performance. Well, the whole thing is to make your cold run performance as well, as good as you can, your, your hot on fire performance on a given day anyway, right? This is why we dry fire. This is why we do repetitive practice all the time, or we should be, right? We try to go to the range twice a week. We try to definitely make sure we're handling and touching the gun in some way, you know, four to five times a week in dry fire, you know? And th I mean, there's, there's a whole reason for repetition to try to mimic or to try to improve what our cold run performance could be, whether it be at a match or again, possibly the worst day of your life, right? So, but that has to come from some repetition. So dismissing any improvement that you make because it's not your cold run performance, kind of just like it, that's just as damaging as trying to think everything needs to be. Done. This is why though, we still need those cold numbers, right? This is why I said, we're going to do six runs of this. So I've done two now, right? I did one to establish. I did a second one to start making some improvement. I'm going to do a third run to validate that improvement and make sure it's something that sticks, right? So am I mentally and visually aware of what's going on to try to match that performance? If for some reason something gets really, really skewed between the last run and this run, then I might need to kind of stop what I'm doing and assess what's, what's going on. So far, I'm feeling pretty good that nothing is broken down yet. I'm still not beyond my skill or ability. I'm not trying to push those things. I'm All I'm trying to do is clean up the times that I know, based on previous data, leaving time on the table, right? I need to start doing a better job of managing my cold run performance to start matching those kind of warmed up runs on demand. That's how we're able to start again, then like figuring out what our progression level or progression rate is. I wouldn't. So if you can go to the range even once every two weeks, take take two aspects of your shooting, and we'll talk about what those like to what I feel like. There's four like overall aspects of shooting are kind of like four chapters within the book of practical shooting that we should be focused on. And we'll talk a little bit about what those four things are in my opinion. AJ may have a little bit difference of opinion on that and you know what, that's awesome, right? It's the whole reason we have two instructors to do this, to bounce information off each other. We'll talk about that. So and I try to pick one to two of those chapters to work on every time I go to the range. 